fans and welcome to another episode of the Engineering Sarcasm Show. Before we go any further, I bring you bad news. The hairdresser has left me for a week. She has gone to a hairdressing convention and look what's happened. The hairdresser and the pen have not been working very well. But we digress. Just like things that don't work very well, we have these, which are those famous Jura Crap Cranks from Shimano, which fall apart. Um, with, look like, galvanic corrosion. Anyway, sales of these are probably plummeted because they've had a rifting from various individuals, myself included. And one of the ones that is very popular now are these, which are rotor Aldo cranks. Now, the reason why these are fairly popular is it's one of the few ones which operates on a 24 millimeter axle. So today, I'm going to show you some of the technical things around this. As a brief kind of overview, what we got? Well, this is a completely modular concept. So in this case, the crank arms are 155. Now, I've seen them go up to 185. Um, so you've got a wide variation in that. You've got also varying sizes of axle. So this one's a 24mm one. It is available in a 30, but... I wouldn't actually recommend you go for that, I'd recommend you stick with the 24. Um, the reason for that is because the axle is steel. So um, that will last a lot longer. And if you do the, um, the engineering calcs on it, an aluminium axle um, at 30 millimeters and a steel axle at 24 millimeters, there's not actually uh, much in the way of weight difference, but there is a big difference in terms of longevity. And then the final bit is this. Now this is a one piece double chain ring. So it's been machined out of one piece of 7075 aluminium. And then it's had some extra rivets attached. So if I go through all of these in turn, these are the crank arms. Now these crank arms are, they look to be forged. And you won't be able to tell unless you, you cut them off and then did some microscopic analysis. Unless I, as I said before, they're 155 millimeters. Now, the key thing here is it's one piece. It doesn't look like it's joined. I'd be very surprised if it's joined. Um, and the, the machining to remove material is from the outer periphery. Um, so it's extremely strong. Um, so that applies to the, this is the non-drive side. Um, and that's the drive side. The non-drive side is just a plain crank arm. The non Sorry, the drive side is just plain crank arm. The non-drive side has also got this, which is the preload system, which we'll come to in a minute. That contrasts to this. So this is the Jura Ace, and we can see that it is, well, of a very, very similar, but also different design. So just to purely in terms of the crank arm, this crank arm is fairly feeble in comparison. Um, the metal's quite thin and you've got this hollow section uh, in the centre of it to, uh, to take your load up. Whereas that has all the uh, material removed from the outside. And this is relying on a glued joint. The preload system is mechanical preload. It doesn't require any um, wave washers. On the Shimano crank, it was that. And I believe that is a painted device so they couldn't copy it. This which is the rotor setup, is the same type that's used on quite a lot of them. Um, the SRAM dub is also the same. It's like a collar that's threaded with an Allen key to uh, lock it straight up. Um, the only thing is, and I haven't tried this, is some of them it's plastic and on those they tend to break. I think it's the SRAM ones that are pretty feeble. You're better off getting a metal one if you can. That does appear to be metal, um, but it's coated in something, so I can't say for certain. On here, the, um, the method to clamp up to the axle is via a taper. So as you put that on and tighten that up, that will draw it onto the taper. On the drive side, the drive side's a little bit different because you've got the, the drive for the chain ring. And that goes onto these splines here. So the whole thing goes like that. Now the advantage of this is if you are running a, um, an oval chain ring, you've got quite significant amount of adjustment 
to be able to to move that versus the previous setup which had like 110 bcd with three or four holes in it whereas this has got a way way more adjustment um i don't run oval chain rings but if you into that then yeah that's probably something to consider um, as far as the chain ring goes that's clamped in by the drive side crank arm which goes on there do that allen key up and it locks it all up now this really is a work of art so this is one piece of metal uh, that looks to be looks to be forged or it could even be a billet i don't know 7075 um, and you can see the path where the cutter has gone over and just made that in one piece now if you were the cad engineer or the uh the cnc man who programmed the machine to be able to do that you'd probably be giving yourself a pat on the back uh, for that and uh, on this channel where we praise engineering i'm going to give you a pat on the back as well because that is really quite good um now in terms of dimensional accuracy i'll show you that in the powerpoint but again as far as engineering goes and quality engineering this is it now, the only thing i should say about this is i've not tried these on a bike now i've tried rotor cranks in the past probably 10 years ago and they were crap <laughs> but since then they've certainly improved a lot um, so i have had a 3d uh, crank set uh, tried as a loner and that was pretty good now in terms of longevity again don't know how that's going to work um, but again on the, uh, the realms of customization you can get a large variety of chain ring combinations um, but and this is the big but there is a disadvantage in the sense that you're buying a pair so you can't buy a single big one and a secondary small one you, you you've got you know a match set whereas with the shimano set you did have a bit of variation in the sizes that you could get okay maybe it's three or four but it's better than just having one so that's something to consider what i've done here is i've just bolted it up so that you can see how it is once it's, it's fixed um that's effectively the the center spindle um distance between crank arms is about 92 millimeters uh, 92 and a half these things are on tapers so as you tighten it will draw it up the taper a bit more on that side it's fixed so you've, you've got a limit on this side it's not you can keep carrying on um the preload collar goes there and you've got plenty of adjustment now these spacers and the o-rings come with it um, the instructions for it i will say are pretty diabolical um the instructions that came with this one were designed or you know stated it was for the 30 millimeter option this is obviously the 24 with a steel axle as opposed to aluminium um but overall you know as a piece of mechanics this is pretty good it was very good um so that's where we are so advantageous uh, is things with this is that it's going to fit any bike you're not limited by uh, small bearing sizes or trying to fit a 30 millimeter or a dub axle inside a bb86 bike you haven't got that it's 24 millimeters so it's a fairly standard size um, and then because it's 24 millimeters you're not going to trash this axle all that easily because you've got delrin spacers if you choose to go down that route um, to protect you whereas on a 30 millimeter it's it's directly onto the bearing surface if you are one of the regular viewers of the channel, you will know about the extensive use of numerical modelling that I do on here. Now that would not be possible without Skillshare, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. Now Skillshare is just a bit more than a learning platform. It allows you to interact, grow and succeed in tasks that you may have otherwise found somewhat challenging. In my case, I joined Skillshare for two primary reasons. The first was to improve my German and the second, which is a lot more relevant and you've just seen, was to improve my Excel visualization skills. So it appeals to a wider range of people such as those viewing the channel. Now, the course that I would recommend is this one, which is called Microsoft Excel Essentials Level 3 VBA Programming by Alan Jarvis. Now I found this course to be quite engaging and pitched at just the right level. Um, he covers everything like visualization strategies for wider audiences, um, some of the key coding and also fine levels of customization that give you the tools to adapt 
what you've learned to your particular situation. If you are interested in becoming a member of Skillshare, the first 1,000 people to use the link or my code Hambini will get a month free trial of Skillshare. Time for PowerPoint. It's the rotor I'll do. Is the pen working? The pen is working. It's got a bit more uh, jiggly of late. Bye Hambini H5. If you would like to subscribe to me on Patreon, that would be much appreciated. I'm um, also on Instagram and on Facebook. I won't mince around on this one. Keys to picking a crank. This video has been wanted by a number of people who have had numerous Shimano crank failures, um, myself being no exception. The key things are to check for stiffness in the torsional direction, bending stiffness in two planes and preload. Now I haven't put on there weight because you can't really have all of these and have it lightweight at the same time. You will have a compromise in some areas. The reason being the materials involved and some of the stiffeners that you have to put in, you can't have when it's lightweight. Geometric check. So the first thing was, um, here is a rotor. Um, this is an Aldo 30 millimeter, but you'll get the idea. The axle was checked here and here and we got 23.98 and 23.99. It is therefore quite good. I also clamped it on this side and then put a DTI on the other side to measure the run out. I mean, it is a fairly short axle. It's only like 90 millimeters um, between crank arms and it was less than 0.01. So it's, it's well, well made in that regard and you wouldn't expect anything different. This is a further geometric check. So this is, I've drawn this schematically, but here's a, here's a 105 crank. This is clamped in the lathe and then you put DTI on the small chain ring and the big chain ring and then turn it. Um, and I got 0.63 on the outer, so that there, and then 0.45 on the inner. That's measuring how flat this is. The lower that is, the better. Now on the rotor system, that is influenced by this quite dramatically because if you are not completely flat and flush, it'll put a bit of a tilt onto the chain rings and then you become screwed. The bending and torsion that I was on about, this is I mean, the key thing that these things are marketed on is the stiffness, you know, crank stiffness, crank bending, and they tend to look at it in this direction, so the, the, the direction of travel, effectively. So that's that way. In reality, a worse load comes from this schematic that's on the right. So if this is the crank, when you are pedaling, you are pushing like that, but because the pedal is sitting here, you're also trying to tilt it in that way, which is what that here depicts. That places quite a big load on a few areas. One of the key things is the bearings in the bottom bracket, hence you want to get these as wide apart as possible. So something like a BB30 bottom bracket is not advisable and also the joints. So on the Shimano crank set, the only real joint that you can undo is on the non-drive side. On the rotor crank set, you've got three joints. So you've got one there, one there, and then also one to join the crank on. So you've got a compound joint in there. Admittedly, this joint and this joint are tapered joints, whereas on the Shimano, they are parallel, but nonetheless, a joint reduces stiffness. That's why you want one piece things. Now, and this is probably what people have been waiting for, rotor versus Shimano. So the rotor crank sets uh, like the Aldo and some of the others have something called Trinity drilling. So if you were to cut through the center of the um, crank arm, you'll see three holes. The kind of Shimano equivalent, which and this picture probably makes it look worse than it actually is, in fact it is just dreadful, is um, a clamshell type clamp. So if you were to cut that open, 
it would look something like that with glue in here, which they call bonding. That is not as stiff in the sense that you are reliant on the glue, but this is just like one piece of metal. You look at it, it's almost like three pieces of hex that are together. So this is fundamentally a stronger material because you have got strength all the way through. That glue joint, the shear stress of the glue is your limiting factor and that's why these things have failed. This is not easy to do and there have been reports of some people with issues around that Trinity drilling so you know bear that in mind. If you are going to get a Shimano crank then the 105 is probably the one to get. Um, I don't know how this iteration of Shimano 9200 is going to go um, because they have put a plug in to try and stop some of the galvanic corrosion but from a fundamentally mechanical point of view this is likely to be stiffer. I haven't had a 9200 into test but this is you know quite quite stiff. I did allude to this earlier the compound stiffness um, and that is to take the stiffness of the parts all together. You can't just take the crank arms and say the crank arms are stiff, the axle is stiff. You've got to add all of those things together. In the case of Shimano, you can see so many joints um, inside this cutaway of the um, drive side crank. Um, I forget which number that one is, maybe a 9000 series. Um, but you, I mean, you've got so many joints just around here. So you've got the, the axle. There's a plug that's peened over to hold it in, so there's an interference in there. And that's typically where the, um, the galvanic corrosion tends to exhibit itself, because this bit here is steel. I haven't written that very well, and the rest of it is aluminium. Another key thing to look at is chain ring flex. Now, let me play you a video of chain ring flex. One of the problems with chain ring flex and what you've just seen is a video from a chap who used one of these. So it's a absolute crap uh, chain ring and this does flex considerably. I mean I can hear it flexing. The, I mean on the front of it, it says manufactured from AL7075 TXXX. I've never heard of that material. We'll be doing a full review on that shortly. That chain ring flex is, I won't say immune, but it's much less likely on the 105 and the Shimano setup because you've got quite a wide PCD, or BCD, bolt circle diameter, but I guess in, uh, in Europe we tend to say PCD, um, for the chain rings to bolt onto, whereas on um, the rotor crank set, it's at quite a small diameter, so you've got a bigger lever arm for it to lever against. The other point is where the teeth go on the um, Shimano cranks, it's considerably wider than this. I mean, this is paper thin compared to that. Um, now, obviously there's possibly a weight penalty for that, but as you've seen, the noise and things aren't great. Gear ratio is available, I alluded to that earlier in the video and the DBCA on some axles, so the distance between here and here on some axles is quite small and it will limit you on what bike you can put that into. And then finally the instructions are terrible. If you've got any questions or comments please use the comment box below and until next time keep banging your hairdresser.